Good afternoon, Monarchs. Yesterday when I shot that video, I uh, after I went back and watched the film, it was kind of hard to see me making that cope cut. So today what I want to do is I want to go over that again and I want to move my body so you can actually physically see me using the saw because I felt like yesterday you couldn't do any couldn't see anything that I did. Now just to recap a little bit, I turned the saw on 45 degrees to the left and I lock it down. Now at that 45 degree cut, that's where I want to start. Make sure you got your safety glasses on. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make a cut. Now make sure your hands are out of the way. Keep that saw down until it stops. Now, where I want to cut, this is where I want to cut right here. I want to remove this material. All right, and that's what I'm going to use the coping saw for. Now I'm going to back this saw up out of the way. I'm going to take my coping saw, and this is what I want to do. I want to start right here. And what I want to do, I want to start nice and easy, and I want to remove this material nice and slow. And what I'm doing, I'm dipping that down a little bit because I want to remove the material out of the back of the cut. I'm just taking that and I'm arcing it. Now, if that piece cracks off like that, you can always cut it again. All I do is I follow that line as I go around. Now that works on baseboard, anything else. If I cut that 45 to the left and I just follow that line, that is going to give me the profile of what I need to cut. And when I cut two of them and I put them together, that's what a joint looks like in the corner. It's a little bit better of a joint than a miter joint. All right. So that is how we make a cope cut with the coping saw and I hope that you can see what I did today because I felt bad yesterday I, I explained how to use make the cut but I didn't do a very good job because you couldn't see it so hope you're having a good day monarchs I'll see you tomorrow